I'm Al Phil Reese. I'm Anna Safford. And this is Mod Po Minute, actually five minutes. We're hoping to scratch the surface of a short poem that we like. So let's get started. So we're here in the lovely Writer's House Garden on this sunny afternoon, and I'm here with Davey Noodle. Hey, hey Davey. What's up? Hi. So we're going to talk about this room, a John Ashbery poem from his collection, Your Name Here. Um, so I'll read it real quick, and then we'll spend a couple minutes talking about it. The room I entered was a dream of this room. Surely all those feet on the sofa were mine. The oval portrait of a dog was me at an early age. Something shimmers. Something is hushed up. We had macaroni for lunch every day except Sunday, when a small quail was induced to be served to us. Why do I tell you these things? You are not even here. Do you have just like a first reaction to like, I don't know, it feels like so delicious. It's super lovely and the pair of first reactions I have is one, to think about the reversal of imagining a room in a dream. and. What you get in the poem is actually being in a room in real life that is a dream. Right. And that, re that reversal is lovely because then you get a lot of things that are very close and intimate, details that are very clear. We had macaroni for lunch every Sunday. And then details that are just like a feeling or a gesture, something shimmers, something is hushed up. Mm. And so you get the sense of a dreamlike quality, but you also understand that like in the space of the poem, that's what's happening to you. Absolutely, yeah. Which is lovely. The way that the, I, I, I so agree with what you said, the way that the very sort of real, tangible things interact with the kind of dreamlike things mm -hmm. um, is something that this poem, it's such a short poem, right? Two yeah. short stanzas, yeah. um, achieves really beautifully, right? Surely all those feet on the sofa were mine is something that feels really real, right? Mm -hmm. Like almost like a kid always <laughs> like sort of putting their feet on the sofa, being told not to coupled with this almost surreal, the oval portrait of a dog was me at an early age, mm -hmm. right? What's your yeah. reaction to that line? That line is kind of funny. It, it's funny and it's also helping do the work of temporality in this poem, which both sure. feels like very, like very immediate, like the room I entered, like the room I just entered was a dream of this room, like it's mm. happening right now. Right. And I'm telling you about something that happened in the space of childhood. And so the moments of feet on the sofa, early age, macaroni for lunch every Sunday, all feel like kind of kid things. They certainly do. And the oval portrait of a dog was me at an early age. Feels like the kind of like childlike, like when I grew up, I want to be a dog. <laughs> or like, here's a picture of me as yeah. a dog. Yeah. But there's also something like, a little bit sad or like a little bit scary or like ominous about some of the fragmentation yeah, here, at least interesting. for me. And so like, I feel like the dog is doing a couple of those things. Yeah. So is it possible, I mean, a, a, one possible reading of this poem is that the speaker of the poem is kind of returned to a childhood space. Sure. That's, you know, maybe they haven't been to in a really totally. long time. It could be like, maybe like your grandparents like <laughs> living room kind of thing that was like sort of the fancy living room you weren't allowed to put your feet on that sofa or that that dog portrait was something that is like a real marker like of that sure. space yeah so it feels to me that's like a really possible reading mm -hmm. so then maybe um maybe a last a final question maybe before we wrap up would be to ask about these final two lines right why do i tell you these things you're not even here who might the speaker be talking to in that moment there's the lovely doubleness of that being the reader. Sure. Of that being like a super lovely Mod Po, like Sid Corman style. Mm -hmm. I want to keep you here in the poem, but also here in the room. Right. But then also the space of like, if this is a childhood space, then like someone in your present life, a lover, a partner, someone who you like have to be narrating to them in order to be able to be in the space and deal with the dissonance. Sure. But also there's no use in narrating these things as though you were sharing the space because you can't. Yeah, it's true. There's a, there's a real kind of sadness to that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, I think maybe uh, this would be a good opportunity for sort of a final word. Um, and I'll start to give you a second to come up with something sure. brilliant. <laughs> um, I really just wanted to kind of cheer for the, the amazing sort of grammar of when a small quail was induced to be served to us. Mm -hmm. That's one of those indicators. The grammar of that is so, um, it's so kind of old school. It's so, um, it really does make me think that this speaker is perhaps coming to a space that was, um, that belonged to uh, like a grandparent or something like that. Um, 
and the, the equivalence of the small quail being the thing that is served and also the grammar of induced to be served to us, I think is so beautiful and brilliant and yeah. so Ashbarian. So final thought, Davey? My final thought is that for me, this really is a poem about two rooms. That this is a poem in which the first stanza happens in one sort of room and the second stanza happens in a different kind of room, a room that's based around eating rather than sure. based around sitting. And so the elision of this is one space, sort of the space that is the single room feels like the space of the poem rather than the space of the two rooms in the poem. That's really amazing. Well, thank you so much for joining me for this. Thanks, Anna. If you liked this episode, watch another and subscribe. And join us for ModPo, a free and open course at modpo.org.